uh, the son of the people. Anyways, welcome. Uh, we're, we're talking about high order function. So there are two parts to high order function. Basically a nested function and lambdas. Um, I think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna follow the ordering of the prof because the ordering of the prof is a bit messy. So I'm just gonna start with lambda expressions first. So what is a lambda expression? Lambda expression is a function. Basically lambdas are functions, but then they are not, they don't have names. So in this case, uh, this lambda, right, is very simple. If you can see like lambda is, it takes in three arguments and it values to a number. So in this case, a uh, function in the application, right, you, you know, you have a function then like one to three, it will take in A as one, B as two, C is three, and then it will sum it up and it goes to three. Pretty intuitive, right? So this is a function, okay? There's a closure containing by, uh, forget it. So in fact, actually like if you wanna see, right, actually like this particular, these two parts is actually equivalent. So if you see, F equals to lambda ABC dot uh, colon AB is equal to def F ABC return A plus B. So in this case, right, this F particular here is the variable. It's just the same as a variable. But then inside the variable, you store a lambda function, uh, function, which is actually the same with this lah. Okay. So in this case, right, if if um, if I do f equals to this, it means that I can immediately write this as f one two three, which is a format that you guys are more familiar with. In this case, yeah, uh, this is similar where you have the parameters and the output and this one is a keyword like that indicate that this is a function the reason why we use lambda functions is because lambda functions are sometimes we just want to create a function you need to use functions but then we don't really want to define it because like you know sometimes it's just like some unimportant trivial functions as we often use lambda okay now going to the first part of the tutorial is that set function. So first of all, we have max power. And if you can see right, there's a, thanks for answering the chat. We have a function inside another function. You can see that it is linked in this way. Okay, trust me, you don't, you, to be honest, if I were you, I would not want the midterm to be an MCQ. So yeah, uh, you know, we have count, count. I think some of you already did nested function. Nested function is basic. Basically, right, nested function is also the same as a separate function. So like if you do def count outside, it's the same. But what makes uh, nested functions unique is that first, you cannot call, oh wait, damn it. You, what makes it unique is that first, you cannot call count outside. This one is impossible. You can only call the function count when you are inside the enclosing function. And second of all, what's amazing about uh, a nested function is that it can uses the variables that are used inside the function max power here. So we have n, which is here, exponential is here. Okay. So that's the part. That's what makes nested functions a bit different than traditional functions, okay? Um, okay, um, now, um, can anyone tell me what's the result, what's the output for um, max power two and 1000? There's a 10. Okay, so if you run it, the answer is 10. It's not really intuitive, but then let's try to trace it because like later on in your P midterms, you are not able to run the code in IDLE. So we'll try. We'll try, okay? If I make a mistake, please let me know. So max count. Uh, max power 
So this will change it to, it will return me count one zero. Okay, cool. Um, means that it will return count one zero. Right, so this one will have one zero. If one is greater than exp, which is in this case, we know that n is two, exp is 1000. Then you return the count, but it's not. So we return count m times n, one plus count. So in this case, we have count one times two, zero, one plus zero, because count is zero. Now m becomes two. It's not, so we we'll do it again, count two times two, one plus one, it's not, count four plus times two, remember like n is still two regardless of what happens, but then the value of m keeps on changing, comes keeps on creating greater, one plus two, the value of count also keeps on changing, this one value is two, this one is one, this is zero, that's why it keeps on changing, and if you can see, the part over here, right, will exponentiate 2 to the power of n. And basically, this part is the n. Okay. So I guess what it tries to see is that once, once 2 to the power of n is actually greater than x exp, which is in this case, it's 1000, then you return the count which happens to be, to be the power. Lah. So in this case, we know that we started with 2, so like 2 to the power of 10 will give us greater than 1000, hence the re result is 10. It doesn't matter how you got the calculation, but you kind of understand now, like how do you actually deal with nested functions? That's what's important, okay? If you're confused with the calculation, it's okay, but now you understand like, oh, how do you call nested functions inside? Okay, so if I do max power 2 and 1000, it will give me 10. If I do max power 3, 1000, it will give me 7. Now, the question, the most important question here is like, which variables live in the scope of count but not a local variable of count? What's the answer? Any answers? There's EN, there's EXP. So the answer is actually both. So both N and EXP actually lives in the scope of count, but it doesn't, it's not a local variable. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's what's amazing about test functions. Okay, anyways, um, next up we have uh, nested. This is our second nested functions, where we have partial op def action ab print op ab return. Now, now we face with lambdas. Remember, lambdas is a function that is without a variable. Alright. Okay, so um, f1 is equal to 5, 10. So what we can, what can we do here? Is, we can do, uh, can anyone estimate what's the output of this? Yes, uh, thanks ratio is 30. But again, like the question is like, how do we get there, right? So F1, 5, 10, yeah. so F1 can be replaced by this entire part over here. So we'll just replace it, partial lambda x, y, x, x times two plus minus two x plus two y. Right, and then we have five, ten. 
So here we have partial it actually returns action. The function partial here actually returns action. Right. Actually, it take, takes in 510. But then like the function action function itself, right? This one will print. Okay, again, print OP A B. Now what is OP, right? Remember, OP is actually from partial, the input partial. So this is OP. In this case, this is OP. So in this case, we'll represent this as, say, to make it easier, I'll try to represent it as a variable. So let's say we have a variable theta, which is equal to lambda x, y, 2x plus 2y. So here, we want to print theta 510. And in this case, if we see, right, Theta is a function that takes in two parameters, x and y, which returns 2x plus 2y. So in this case, we have 2 times 5 plus 2 times 10, which is 30. Okay. Does everyone get it? We start, with partial, we start writing out the entire statement. And then we try to return it what it's supposed to be. And then in this case for the lambda over here, we try to assign it to a variable as well to make it to make our life simpler. And then we try to see what's the what's the output of each stage. Okay. Um, now the question, next question is this uh, Like what is this? What is the output of F2, 5, 10? Uh, 30 also. Okay, why is AB equals to 5, 10? Oh, uh, more like that's the out input. Like, where's my pen? Like, it's not the same, but more like that's the input law. Like again, partial here returns action. And then F, F1, 5, 10, meaning that at the back here got like 5, 10. So hence here, uh, yeah. this becomes the input for the function action here. It's not the same, but AB here is an input law. Remember, if you only like written one word like this, right? If you written one word like this, this is you're returning a function. Okay, you don't not not the return value. Okay, so okay, and the answer for this is actually not that simple. It's not just thirty, but there's also the none. Okay, which I just discovered earlier in my previous tutorial on why there's none. So we see again, f two is partial f one. So like. There's like partial, partial, lambda, x, y, x2, y2. Again, I would like to replace this part with a variable, lambda equal, theta equals to x, y, x plus 2, x2, y2, I don't care. So now we have partial, partial, theta. Um, then we have like 510, okay? Um, is this correct? Yes. No, actually, this is wrong. Um, that should be like this. Uh, partial theta, 510, and then like this. So generally, we want to evaluate this part first. Right. Eh. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 sorry, sorry. The earlier part was correct already. Sorry, we want to evaluate this part first. Right, part theta, partial theta, which is this, F1, right? This one is F1. In which F1 will return us with action. Let's say this one is action one to indicate that this is the first action result. 
So in this case, we have uh, we have this action over here. Action one is basically uh, it will print the theta a b. So what's important here is that the action one right is that the o p is theta in this case. That's part. Next up, we have part two, the, the second partial, where second partial actually calls return another action, which so we'll call it action two, in which action two is, uh, will actually print action one, 510, okay? You know, we will print action one. Okay, so now uh, we got we simplified with action two now. Now let's actually do the calculation now. Five ten, we insert right. Uh, this one is supposed to be AP, so now we replace to five ten. So we now it prints action one. Now it's time to execute act, uh, action one. Action one actually prints theta a b, so theta a b is a is replaced with five, ten, and then prints theta a b is, as you can expect, is thirty. But then again, right? I think what what we need to pay attention is that action one does not have any return statement, so it returns none. So when we evaluate this part over here, right, it actually evaluates to none. Hence, after running action one. When it runs action two, right? It prints action two. It prints this part. It actually prints none. Hence, the none over here. So as you can see, this is actually a result from the print statement. F two five ten itself does not have any function. It um. I would not say that, like, yeah, F2 itself does not have any, no, F1 alone, F1 alone does not contain 510. F1 contains 510 from this part over here. So this would be produced 30 and 30 if, if the print OP was, uh um no if it's changed to return right if it's changed to return what happens is that in this when you execute action one right say this is return right you won't print anything you will just like calculate and then just return the value to here after you calculate 30 it will just bring bring it here this one is return and then after this one is uh, evaluated into 30 and then it will just simply return 30, as it will only print once. It's just, because it's written, right, it just passes the value over. Okay, a bit mindfuck, huh? A bit mindfuck. <coughs> um, Okay, still explain action two. Okay, um, my handwriting is quite bad, huh? Um, okay, okay, let's try. No, no, it's, it's okay, it's okay. I'm just trying to erase this part first. Uh, Here I have action one, which is actually pretty arbitrary. Action one is actually the result of this first inside part over here, where it will do o theta a b. And then this part, right? The second partial, the partial that is actually on the outside, remember like there's a double partial here, right? The second partial, right, will actually return another action, but then it's a different action. Hence, I will separate it action 
by actually calling it action two. Now, what does action two does is that it does print or return or whatever OPAB, right? OPAB. Now, in this case, the OP right is actually action one here. So here, you can simply replace this as action one. A, B. So what you can, what happens here is just, it's just like the partial part of here is just like encapsulating the overall, the, the outside lah. In, in this case, right, in this very specific case, um, this particular partial doesn't really do anything because it just passes the value inside. Yeah, so even in the scenario where this is a return, right? Action one, action one will evaluate as action one will evaluate as theta a b, and theta a b will evaluate as thirty. So after going down, it will go up. So action one will evaluate as thirty, and because action one evaluates as thirty, uh, action two also evaluates as thirty. You get what I mean? No, it's pretty confusing. I I understand. Uh, Wei Chao, is it okay already? Then the none is because of what? Okay, the none was because of this or earlier, like um, uh, it was print. It's not written. Now, in this case, right? Um, uh, data A B right here. Uh returns back to action, but then what action does was that what action does here is just it just prints 30. Hence it never returned any value to action two. So after printing 30, uh it tell, action one tells action two, hmm, I got nothing. Nah. So like action when action two sees the value of action one, oh you got nothing, okay, I'll just print none. You you need to remember that it was got cut here. Okay. All right. Um, so that's for nested functions, uh. It's a bit difficult, uh, but you need to like break it down bit by bit. And if you're confused, sometimes you just like need to assign it to another variable, uh. If you're confused, you can always just like assign it to a variable called theta or action one or action two. The question is, uh, which variables live in the scope of action but not in local ac not local action? Um, I think the answer is pretty obvious. It's OP la. Okay. okay. We've been through this. Uh, uh. Okay, so I think going to lambdas now. Uh, lambdas as functions, as traditional functions, you cannot have like if the function is defined for three inputs, you cannot have just like missing one input. So it will produce us an error where it's missing. It's a type error where it's missing one required positional argument c. Okay. In this case, we have a lambda expression where it's lambda a returns a lambda b a plus b. So in this case, like lambda a takes one argument and returns another function, which is very possible where a function take, returns another function. And this one is even more crazy where it's, you know, a function returns a function that takes in an argument which returns another function. Lah. Okay. But you don't really have to be concerned about that. Just like, you know, be more relaxed. So in this case, we have this example over here, lambda a b plus a plus b so that in this case right when lambda a takes x is equal equals to lambda a equals to lambda b a plus b one right this one right will go inside a and then this a will goes inside b this a so like the output will be lambda b one plus b so in this case the output is still a function okay and then here right uh x is basically lambda b 1 plus b hence when i have x plus x3 right i remember that x is lambda b 
1 plus b has 3 plus 1 plus 3 is 4. Okay. So in this case, we have same case. You can just like, whenever you can always insert the value in. I never need that. Okay. Are there any questions so far? On lambda expressions. So the one goes into B and the three goes into A. This one, yeah, somewhat, you can say it that way lah. Yeah, so in this case, if you really expand it, like what happens is that uh, lambda A goes to lambda B, A plus B, one, three. We evaluate this part first, which we'll evaluate as like lambda B equals to one plus B. Oops. 3, as 3 goes into here, basically 1 plus 3, 4. Okay? Okay? Alright. If you don't stop me, then I'll assume you guys understand, huh? which I highly doubt that's the case. Okay? So same case here. So in this case, we evaluate from left to right. In this case, see earlier, we evaluate this part first. Now for this, for the last question, uh, so the default is zero for the first B, right? Um, no, there's no default. There's basically no default. Lah. If there's no value assigned, then there's no value assigned. There's no default. So in this case, we have this lambda expression over here, which is freaking complicated. So what we can do is we can evaluate from left to right. In this case, we evaluate it like lambda x equals to x. And then takes in an input. Uh, lambda x returns x lambda y, y, and then lambda z and one, one. So first we evaluate the first part over here. Now we need to identify that there's two, three parts to it. This is this is how we split it. So it's not this way. Uh. This one is not a split. We split it this way. One here and one here. So in this case, we evaluate the first two statements first. In this case, where this input is inserted in this one. So in this case, if you can see here, right, we'll just take this part out. Where the value of x is equal to this which is simplified into this, All right? And then, because this is another function, and this is an input, we'll just insert it here. The output of z is written here, where the value of z is this, which is, even sim which is substituted inside, lambda y equals to y, then it takes it in, yada, 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 and we got it one. The default is zero for the first B, right? Um, it's not default lah. Okay, nice nested lambda. Okay, for those of you who's confused with this, right? These are possible questions that you might see in your midterms and finals, so please don't underestimate, okay? Twenty-five percentile, boys. Okay, okay, I think I'll just try to keep it simple. I'll try to keep it simple. Again, we'll try to split it this part, this part. Yeah. I think for ease, for to make it easier, right? We, remember, we can do substitution. So in this case, I want to substitute this. I want to substitute this as like gamma. Gamma is lambda y, that returns y. And this one is um, theta, gamma z, goes to z. Okay, so in this case, I can simplify lambda x, x, gamma, right, and then we have uh, theta, 
and then one. Much easier, right? Usually just take out all the lambdas uh, and assign it to a variable. And then because this is, uh, okay, now we evaluate the first two parts, right? X, X, we insert, because it's here, we insert it. This will evaluate to theta, gamma, right? Now we kind of need to expand this. So finally we will expand this. Theta, gamma is a function, which is correct. It's a function, which is, stands for lambda z equals to z for gamma. And it's because uh, we try to insert gamma in. So like uh, z is z, so like this will just evaluate simply to gamma. Okay, so now we already got gamma and there's nothing that we can simplify it even further. So now, like we now have got gamma one. Gamma one is a fun function, lambda y, y. We insert the value of one inside, hence it will give us the value of one. Is this much easier to understand? I think don't think about what belongs to what, okay? Um, the key to actually deal with lambda expressions is go from left to right, uh, inside the bracket going outside. And when you see like, you know, just like standalone lambdas like this, try, try to like pull it out and save it into a variable. Yeah, in this case, like Z goes to Y. La. Okay, remember, left to right, inside out, and if you see a get lambda, uh, assign it to a variable. We'll deal with this with more PE questions. Um, in fact, actually, I'll just start the PE discussion now. Um, in fact, uh, okay, so um, we'll just start discussing about PE, uh, uh, sorry, midterms. Do you guys have any midterms questions that are related to higher order function? Let's do that. Do you have any midterm questions that are related to higher order functions? Anyone? It's time to ask questions. If there's nothing, then I'll stop here and uh, move on to discussing PE. No one, ah? Okay. Um, Then that's the end of higher order function. Uh, basically, there are lambdas and everything. Try to get a good gist of it. Uh, uh, hi, Aaron. All oh, oh, right. Hi, 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 hi Shen Wei. I have two questions from the midterm paper. All right. Uh, do you want to share screen or something? Uh, what if I upload the file into the chat? Um, uh, sure. Okay, any, anyone else? If you guys have a higher order function related question, feel free to ask. Uh, for any other PE related, uh, any midterm related questions, like other types, uh, we can discuss it at the end of the tutorial instead. Uh, I think share screen is better. Sorry. Okay. Ooh, okay. So you're, you want to ask for both questions, is it? Yeah. Bless. Okay. So we'll try to write first. Uh, F. Damn it. F. Five. Lambda x. X plus two. 
So I think this one, I'll try to store it as a variable first, theta goes to lambda x, x plus two. And here I can simplify it into uh, theta. So we'll try to run it. If n is greater than one, which is not the case, um, if n is indeed greater than one, so uh, we'll return uh, fn, sorry, bad. fn minus one, which is four. And then uh, basically another lambda. Lambda x uh, g, which is theta, and the value of n5, right? Correct. Now we can evaluate the value of theta five. Theta five is in this case, uh, theta is lambda x x it returns x plus two. So like the input is added by two. So this can be evaluated as seven. Right. Um. Okay. So um, we will have this lambda x equals to seven. So then now uh, let me represent this as uh, another variable, say gamma is equal to lambda x returns seven. Now, if you pay attention here, it's quite unique. See, the variable is not used anywhere in the return value. So whatever the input is, right, regardless of what happens, it will just return seven. In this case, I can rewrite it as f4 Gamma. All right. F four gamma will return F three. Lambda x uh, gamma four. All right, because n is four. But then you see whatever the input is, it will always return seven. So we have lambda x seven, which is the same. So basically, this is gamma again. So I can rewrite it as F three gamma. F two gamma, F one gamma. Now when F one gamma one is not greater than one, so we'll go to else return gamma one, in which this will return seven. Because regardless of whatever the input is, the output is always seven. So you change the variable to gamma so that you can evaluate for n equals to three. Yeah, this one. This one I say it's gamma because like technically this one is similar the same as gamma lah x equals to seven. I mean you can always like create like gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, but then everything will also be like x equals to seven, x equals to seven, x equals to seven. This one is maybe more recommended to make your life easier. Because then you are certain that okay, this is this function, this lambda is created at this state, this lambda is created at this iteration. Okay, got it. The x doesn't increase for lambda. As you can see, remember, like in the first, in the very first iteration, right? In the very first iteration, when n is equals to five, this will evaluate to seven. So this will produce a new function where lambda x is equal to seven. This particular, this particular, uh, line over here, right? this particular line, kind of killed the iteration. It kind of killed it that it doesn't, it kind of stopped the number from growing. This would be different if the lambda was replaced with n. No, it would be different if it's like this. Uh, because like, remember our initial function is this, huh? lambda x, x plus two. Um, it would be different if it's like lambda x equals to like gn plus x. So can we say that the expression is being replaced by a constant of 7? Correct. It is. 
that means we don't need to evaluate for n equals to 4, 3, 2, 1 now. Because it's already being replaced by 7. Hmm? You don't need to evaluate n equals to 4, 3, 2, or 1 anymore, right? I mean, if you kind of can figure it out, yeah, you kind of don't have to. Is zoom down or something? You guys have no problems accessing Zoom, right? Okay, that's a bit weird. Hi, sorry, what paper is this? Uh, uh, items. Okay, um, Chen Wei, can do you mind like clearing the screen for me? Because like I cannot clear the screen. We'll we'll now talk about the second question, question number twenty-two. Can you clear the screen? Like just go to okay, thanks. Um, is everyone clear on the first question, the uh, question twenty-one already? If everyone is clear, then let's go to question thirty-two. Um, consider the following function definitions. So what is the result of the execution of the function call? Okay. Okay, so let's trace it one by one. We have h circle g. In this case, it's quite nice because the lambda is already represented by a variable g. So we'll do circle gg, which is which returns uh, lambda x g f x, in which in this case, like this is both f and g. So in in fact, this will actually give us a uh, Lambda x g g. Oh, this one is the output execution. So yeah, um, right like this, right? So we have a lambda x three three, and we want a three three something like this. So we kind of insert it in. We have g g three, right? Now what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna invalidate the value. Do I do it correctly? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it should be correct. So um, now we're evaluating the value from inside out as usual. So g is a function that takes in one input and returns a tuple of two. So this three should become three three. Then three three will return three 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 three. It will just double it up. Hence the answer is D. Okay. Uh are you can I uh are you clear on this? Uh, still slowly reading. Okay, okay. So yeah, I mean, as you see, what you want to do is you just break it part by part. Uh, hi, sorry. Can I explain the how you get the lambda x g g x the the third line? This is this one, is it? Yeah, that one. From here. This one, right? Remember, like, uh, okay, okay. I'll just try to highlight this part over here. Is this one right? So I'll try. I'm replacing this value circle gg right into its return statement, which is this. I'm just replacing it. I'm not changing anything at all. I'm replacing it with the return statement. And for the tree, right? It's just like hand me down from this part, from this part, this part, and this part. Can you explain the last step again? Okay. Um, sure. So I'll just explain from here. So from, from the red arrow, you can see that uh, I replaced the function circle with its return statement, which is lambda x 
GGX. Okay, and then there's three. Uh, what I do here is simply I just insert the value three into this x so that I change the value of x. So I take so hence the result is gg3. Hence after gg3, what I want to do is I evaluate the in, internal input first. g3. So I evaluate g3. What is g3, right? g is defined by this function where, where you receive one output x, right? And the output is a tuple of xx. So if I insert 3, I should get a tuple 3, 3, something like this. So... The G3 is equals to 3, 3. I replace G3 with 3, 3 in this case. And then I use 3, 3 as an input for the second function with G. So in this case, if I have 3, 3 here, it will be converted into this. Uh, does it answer your question, Andy? So you can see lah, like what I do is just like analyze it part by part, try to parse it bit by bit instead of just like brushing everything. Try to analyze it left to right, replace it step by step, substitute it step by step. If there's any lambdas that I can pull out, pull it out. The important part of the doing this is the process. 25 questions in one hour, it's, this got to be a this huge disaster. I'm, uh, I'm, ve I'm very afraid to say, Andy, but I should agree with you on this. I should agree with you on this. So, please uh, be prepared. Okay, other questions regarding higher order function that you guys want to ask? Uh, I have one question. Okay, sure, sure. Oh, go for it. I share my screen? For the sure. sure! Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm eating mommy as well. I'm quite hungry. Oh, lovely. CS99S. Which one do you want to ask? I assume question E. Okay. Let's yeah. analyze. Hmm? Pardon? Hmm. Well, can you scroll up a bit so I have more space to work on it? Uh, okay. Just a bit so I can have, you can use the bottom space to, oh sorry, scroll down. Yes, yes. Okay. Hmm. So I have full, I'll try to split it this way first. So like we have full five bar lambda x. Just remember the brackets are. Mm. Now we analyze full five first. What does full five returns? It returns this right, lambda a, a x a. So I replace full with lambda first, lambda a, a x a. Five. I insert the five inside. Oh, sorry, sorry, my bad. Um, uh, in this case, right, it's full, right? Full returns this, full x, and in this case, right, uh, five is the value of the x. So in this case, the value of x should be replaced by five. In this case, we have lambda. This statement will return lambda a, a5, a. <clears throat> okay. So I think we're done with this. There's nothing else that we can simplify. Next up, we have bar. All right. Now we insert bar inside. So this lambda takes in one function, which is a. So in this case, the entire part will be evaluated as bar 5 bar. Right. And then I think here we can actually simplify things a bit. So we can take this bar 5. Bar 5 is, so meaning x is replaced with 5. 
which actually returns a lambda, another lambda, lambda a, a 5 plus 1, because this is 5, right? And then uh, I'll try to simplify things. So a is equal to 6a bar. Oh no, sorry. Um, is it correct? Mm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Uh, it's not 6a. Uh, lambda a is a6 like this. And it takes in bar. Uh, there, there's still bar here. Yeah, which we can actually still insert. We can still simplify it. By in, 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 inserting bar inside. Meaning that we'll get bar 6. Remember, we haven't touched this yet. Bar 6 will give me lambda a, a 6 plus 1, meaning lambda a, a 7. This is my function. Okay. Now, lambda x here is another lambda. So, in this case, I'm going to replace this with a theta. Theta is lambda x resulting in x. So here I'm going to replace this with theta. So now I have theta here. Right. I insert theta inside. So lambda a returns a 7. So it means theta 7. Now the function theta, right, converts x into x. So if it's 7, it should say as 7. Hence theta 7 will evaluate as 7. As 7. Uh, okay, but I want to ask a question. But uh, why the pi is inserted into the x instead of the a in the first line? Um, because in this case, right? Um, foo, it's you need to uh foo itself the foo. Foo actually takes in an input. Foo actually takes in an input. So. Uh, this five right will be consumed by this uh, the input here first before it is it consumed by the return statement. Okay. Um. Wait. Wait. Okay. So yeah, that's the case. Uh, in this case, like we don't just like immediately return. Um. Why? Why I kind of notice this is because see, it just when I call foo right, it returns lambda a a x a. When inside the function right, there's not really a well defined x except in the input. Hence that we know that we kind of need to take an input from somewhere. In this case, we know that five, there's a five here, and five serves as the x in this foo. Oh. What happens to the second a? What do you mean, ah? Uh? Which second a? Oh, um, nothing. Nothing happens. Transition from bar five bar, please. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll use a different color. In this case, this is bar. This one is, um, so okay, um, this one I'm finished, right? I'm finished with simplifying this. I've converted foo5 into this statement over here. So then it's time to take in the next statement, uh, next value, which is bar. So in this case, in on the left side, I have a function that takes in one input and I have bar. So what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna insert bar into the function as a. So in this case, a is replaced as bar. In this case, we have bar, 5, bar. Okay? No worries. In this case, bar 5 will be consumed again. And remember, bar actually takes in an input. So, the 5 here will be taken as x instead of a. And the lambda will remain as a lambda.
Any other questions? I mean, if you guys got any more questions, just ask us like, I think for higher order function, the more questions you guys ask, the better. Okay. Mm. Uh, hello. Oh, hello. It's gone. Um, okay, so just now, the last expression, it was the lambda, the, the final one, uh, the print something. The lambda, you put into bar, then bar put inside full, right? Mm. I I didn't see the put inside full that part. You mm. kind of like finish off it after you sub inside bar. Yes, this will be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, Siyang, can you share your screen again? Do you mind? Uh, okay, okay. Now you said theta 7, if you put 7 inside theta, then it will still, it will still be 7 because lambda x returns x. Mm. Don't you have to go back into full 5? Wait, 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 wait. When we arrived there, right, when we arrived there, like the earlier parts have been digested already. Oh. Like, that's why we do it from left to right. Because like, right. you know, as we go through it, as we go through the lines, right, it just like keeps on digesting. And it will just keep on. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank you, thank you. You don't, once you already pass, right, once you already pass this, you don't have to care about this. Just like keep on moving forward. Okay. Thanks. All right. Next, Yang. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Any burning questions, any higher order functions that you guys are unsure of? Or really any PE questions, if, if, even the 1010E questions. They're quite difficult. No, I cannot give a random lambda. I'm not that smart to come up with questions and on the spot. Um, that's why it's better just like take question papers or just take a sub random question, random paper, find out the, the lambda question in that paper and just show me. Uh, use it to practice like your lambda skills. Mm. I mean, I assume they won't put a lot of questions on it since they just taught it yesterday. But then, that's CS for you. Yeah, sure. Go go ahead and ask questions. Mm. Do you have any other questions in PE that you want to ask that's not related to Lambda? Then feel free now. I think we're done with the higher order already. Want to share screen? Sure. Ah. Got a bit of trouble with dictionary and this comprehension together. A bit hard. This comprehension is not easy. I'm quite confused as well. Mm. PE part 2, question 2 later. Oh my god, that's the easiest actually. Mm. Yeah. Given the following definition, blah 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 blah. Mm. So let's identify some key important parts. We have this part. Mm. Val keys. DD02 
Cheese. For Val in Val list. Keys dot extend, right? Wait, why am I rewriting this? Do I think what needs to be understand is this part? For Val and Val list means that uh, we'll take this part over here, meaning that it's going to be for Val list in 0, 2. It means that we know that the loop will iterate twice when val is equal to 0 and val is equal to 2. I think the second part of the question that you guys need to understand is the list comprehension here. k for k val in thick items. Um, if you recall correctly, thick items will actually return an array of tuples in the form of k val like this. This is dictot items. Okay. So when I when I do a list comprehension and I say like for k val in tick dot items, it's meaning here, right? It means that uh, for every iteration, right, I will have a value of k, which is like kn, and val, which is val n. Okay, so the tuple is automatically separated. And then like now is the last part, K. K for um, this, 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 this. This part, right, this part over here is the final value in your final list, in your list. So then if it's K, right, in this case, it means that you want a list of uh, Ks. Lah. K1, K2, K3, K4, K5 and so on. So in this case, we kind of figure out, right, when we try to set, when we iterate through the dictionary items, we just want to take the K. It means we want to take the keys. So for val, val, for val zero, for val zero, I'll take all the keys. Uh, Keys will be keys will be extended a b c d e f and then at val two keys will be added again a b c d e f a b c d e f then I'll return the keys uh, does it help Shen Wei I think it doesn't because I think you don't really understand this comprehension, is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I'll go back a step backwards. This comprehension is also not well thought out. So, the principle of this comprehension, right, is you have something. Yeah. This is this comprehension. This is equal to for x in So this is this is list comprehension lah. So the structure of list comprehension right is your value, the variable, and the iterator or sequence. So for every item inside the sequence, yeah. Um, how to for every x inside the sequence, you want to convert the x into fx and store it in a new list. So that is equivalent to this one, lah, this function over here. If you can try to understand the code in the blue box, you'll understand the code in the list comprehension. So 
when we do k for k bell in thick atoms, what happens is that we have a new list, empty list for k bell in thick dot items. new list dot append k mm. so the two the four val in val list and k in val are two different val uh, for those two val are different right um Technically speaking, no. Technically speaking, they are not different. Okay, so when we are iterating this, right, for val and val list, right, val in val list, right, it's meaning that we have val equals to zero and val equals to two. What happens is that when, when uh, I do this comprehension, you know, when I do for loop, for loop, uh, for loop, the val changes la. The val changes accordingly. And once the iteration is done, then it will do a hard reset and set the val into two again. Okay. In, in the scenario, in, in the case for like uh, list comprehension, yeah lah, for in the case for list comprehension, the val is enclosed inside the list comprehension and it's not affected by the val outside. You know, it's like, it's like that, that case, remember when you have like x is 100, then like def print, uh, def foo, then like x is 90, and then like print x. Same case lah. And when we are iterating through the list comprehension, right, it has an internal x. Okay. And wait, uh, do you get now like what does list comprehension does? Yeah, I do actually. But when it put it like put it in this question context, right, then it gets really complicated. Then I don't really know what to do in here. That's especially, why you need. Why yeah, sorry. one? No, sorry, sorry. Uh, especially for the, the one you circled for val in val list. Mm. It's like after I figure out what the list comprehension is, right? Then I go back to the for loop. Then I like quite confused. Uh, what what am I supposed to do actually? Yes, because we always think that when there might be a that might be a relationship between val list and the value. But in fact, in this case, right, there's nothing at all. Val list was made just to throw you off. I guess that's the thing, uh, like you should never hold any assumptions. Like it's good to have an intuition like, mm, that, this might have to do with something, but sometimes it's not. In this case, right, val list, right, really does not do anything. It's just for you, for the for loop to actually repeat twice. But then the value inside the val list was never really used at all. That's why I see when I show you right, val is right, it's just like nothing happened law. So like doing val equals to zero, it will just create the list comprehension and then extend it. Val two, it will generate the list comprehension and extend it. And the value of val was never really used at all. Oh, okay, okay. I guess yeah lah, because of like we sometimes hold that assumption like oh it's gonna do something about it like oh like it must be super important it's not <laughs> it really is it okay any other questions or perhaps does anyone other than Chen Wei wanna clarify some anything on this part?
on dictionaries. Not then uh, maybe anyone else have a question? If there's no question, then I think I want to answer Xie Yang's question on PE. So let me pull that out first. PE is quite fun, guys. Okay, I think I closed it. Actually, like question two, part two is actually very, very, very simple. It's the decode with love, right? No, actually, actually, right. Um, all right, uh, bye, Chen Wei. Um, no, you don't have to have the part one to work, actually. If your part one doesn't work right, but then your part two is correct, you get marks for your part two. Okay, so this is the prof's slides on PE2. Part two, task two, decoding with love. So, how do you do it? I mean, you can always create a new function with decode with love from scratch, lah. But then, like, this is the prof's response. It's redundant. Why do you need to create a new decoding function when you can use the old one? Like, the only problem with when you decode with love, right, is just that you don't know the offset number, right? Then you simply just need to find, lah. Like, there's only like 26 possibilities of all offset numbers. You just need to find which offset number it is. So you can do a for loop, search from 0 to 26. But then like when to stop, which offset that you want to take. It is mentioned in the question, right? If there is the word love in the message, then that is the offset. Hence you simply, if love is inside the message, then it's correct. So this is the answer. Boom. It's only five lines there. For I in range 26, SD decode. If love is in SD, written SD. Simple. Mm. Even if your part one doesn't, part two doesn't work, right? Part two, task one doesn't work. If you can answer this, you'll get marks for this. Full marks. No one is retarded lah, oh my god. I think I'll touch part three a bit. So part three is I think pretty obvious, like you can do like a for loop between the boxes, one by one. All right. But then, actually if you try to attempt like the part three task two, right, it actually makes your life much easier. Yes, it's a math question. If there are like, if there's n co 10 to the power of 5 columns, right, uh, rows, if there's like 10, point 10, 10 to the power of 10 rectangles to calculate. So, this is the magic where it happens. Uh. You guys can actually rearrange all the squares, you know. It's so that life is much easier. Then I can rearrange the columns again. So that um, this is the final triangle lah, where it's actually now much, much easier. Where instead of having like n times n, you just have 3 times 3 square rectangle. 
in which you can simply do a hard coding on this. You can simply hard code like, okay, what is this times this, this times this plus this times this times plus this times this. It is as simple as that. It's just that how do you figure out this part? You can simply do a list slicing. Mm, you can do a list slicing. Uh, say like uh, list, list, start from zero, ends at the end, and then jump three. And then after you sl 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 list slice it, you can do a sum. Hence, you get the value of the columns. For other columns, simply do a one, three, and then two, three. And then you can do um, the relevant multiplication. Okay, so I think uh, I do hope that actually I want to say this. Uh, uh, I do hope that from this PE, right? Uh, this PE is that. Uh, it teach, it shows you that Python E is not about it's not a module about learning Python. It's not learning about how to use the syntax and everything, but it's a module that teaches you how to solve problems. The problems that we'll show you during midterms or PE or finals is problems that you will confirm never see in your tutorials before. Because the purpose of this module is in fact to actually teach you how to solve problems to generalize all problem solving skills. Like Unlike other modules where, you know, like the problems that you see in finals or midterms should have somewhat come up in the tutorials. It's very different with CS mods where the questions that show up most likely will be quite different. But then it is doable with the things that you have learned in class. You should be able to be very flexible to use the tools that you have learned to actually solve new problems, which I think as engineers is quite an important skill, isn't it? So I think that's all. Uh, for PE, um, do you guys want me to go through part one and part two also? Hello, hi. I'm not talking to a wall. Okay, so we'll just go to part one and part two. Hmm. Okay, for part one and part two, right? I don't want to use the prepared slides. Uh, I want to do it my own. Um, so this one is the question, right? Um, right, basically, we just need to convert this to this, right? List indexing or slicing is not considered list comprehension, right? No, no. List comprehension is very specific. List comprehension is the one that we just discussed with Chen Wei, where it's like I for I in this. That's this comprehension. Um, okay. This one is very easy. This one is not easy, lah. Actually, this one is pretty tricky. So you have this thing, right? A equals to zero, B equals to one, C and twelve hundred five, la 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 la. Okay. So I think like I think what we wanna do here is a very basic thing to do. All right. What we wanna do here is actually define the steps. What are the things that we need to do, right? First, we want to iterate through the characters. Damn it. Uh, to convert characters to code three is convert uh, combine all the code now we'll do it part by part so first iterating means like we'll use a for char in range Oh, that's bad. Uh, in string. Right. Second is convert characters to code. So I'll just write convert the characters. 
right? And then I combine all the code. Now, how do I combine all the code? If you remember from uh, burger price, what you want to do is you have a variable, say I call it final, that actually stores your um, calculation. So say this is n, I would do like final plus equals to n, and then return final. Voila, we're done, right? Nah, we're done. Now, we, I guess the biggest challenge in this part is like, how do we actually convert characters to code? Okay, which we have encapsulated in this case. Why do I actually separate it? It's because it's actually the most difficult part. So instead, we'll just try to separate it. Because, you know, like what I'm trying to do is like, I want to keep to make my code as close as possible with my steps in doing this. So now I'll define a new function, def convert char. Now this is where imagination can go a bit crazy. Lah. Now this is up to you on how you do it. There are, so far, so far right, there are four ways to do it. Okay, there are four ways to do it. The first one is an if else statement. If char is equal to a, return zero zero. Else if yada yada yada. This might be crazy, but it works. It's more than fifteen lines, but it works. You'll get mark deductions, but it works. At least it's not zero. Okay, so it actually works, but then you won't get full marks. So now you need to use your big brain. How do I do it, make it easier? Meaning that you, you kind of need a place, a data structure that has a natural pairing between numbers and the characters. You kind of need this pairing. Now there are several ways to do this pairing. Um, can, does anyone want to give, does anyone want to try? What is the first method? Yes, dictionary. We didn't really learn it a lot. It was learned really like very close to the with PE. Very close. So the first one is you can actually define a dictionary. If it's A, should be zero, zero. If it's B, should be zero, one, and so on. And simply you return dictionary of the character. Hence, hence if you use dictionary, hence after you do use dictionary, it's done. Done. Like see, like it's very simple, right? You just do this. You put this into convert, and you create a new function on its own. Okay. The second way, which is not really, which is not taught, is ORD. ORD converts uh, characters wouldn't the code be long for dick? As long as it works, it works off. It, it is long, I agree, but it works. I don't think it's 400 characters long though. Yeah, I don't think it's so. Characters to ASCII value. This is ORD. So what you can do is convert it to a uh, convert it to ASCII value. But then, if you know the ASCII table, right? Uh, a, B, C is not 0, 1, 2. It's somewhere like 66, 67, 68. But then you want to do it, make it into 0. That's what you can do is you can reset everything by actually minus O, R, D, A. Okay. Then you can simply return S, T, R, N. But there are two issues. First, what if it's an 
space, which is which should has mapped to 99, right? And second issue is what if it's a uh, single digits like one, two, three? Okay. So I guess what you can do is you can do several if else statements. If char is empty string, it is a space, return 99. L if n is less than 10, return 0 plus string of n. Else, return str n. Okay, so this is the second way. Is there a, a third way? No, actually this is already third way. Is there a fourth way of doing it? Anyone? Would you like to propose anything? A list? How would you use the list? Yes, you can use index. Let me re erase this. Damn it. Uh, la 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 la. Okay, sorry, sorry. So yes, you can use an index. So what you want to do is you kind of do like alphabets. A, B to Z. And then you simply get like alphabet dot index. character, you'll get the index. This is a fuck method. Huh? Say you don't find this method, you can also do a, a very manual way for i in uh, range 26 if uh, alphabet i equals to char return i it's this, if this one is like for the very dumb way like if you don't know index you can use this as well and then simply use do the if else again on if else on uh, to make it two two characters and then else then finally return the code okay yes you can use string index Okay, uh, maybe another interesting an interesting thought, right, is we have been converting our string to sequences, our string, right, to code by actually like, you know, the code is in string, but remember the code is actually numbers, right? So why don't we actually convert the characters into actual numbers instead? So what if I start final with zero? and the return output of the convert should be an integer. Right. If the return output of is an integer, right, it's so easy. You can just like do like, you can just simply like n is the, anyway, lah, anyway, either dictionary or ORD, char minus ORD A, and then you can simply return the value of n. Maybe a little if else on the space, but then, how will it affect this? Because if you just like sum it up, right, you'll just like 1, 13, 13, 26, 15, 99, it will all just sum up into 1. No, you don't convert it into string. Say I don't want to convert it into string yet. What you can do is, say I have my number 99, right? And then I want to put next 13. What I can do is from 99, I can times multiply it by 100, so I get 9900, 9900, and then I plus 13, hence I get 9913, and then I'll times 100 again, plus it 14, 9913, 14. Hence, in this case, right, you don't really have to worry whether your index is single digit or double digit. 
because in the digit spacing will be taken care of the 100. So in this case, the necessary modifications that I will do is final times 100 because I want to make space for the two digits at the back and then final I want to plus it with add. Okay. Now I got all my digits, I can simply return string final. But wait, what if the word is ABC? ABC is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. Hence, this will actually write in our cal mathematical calculation will result in 102 instead of 0, 0, 0, 102. So we kind of need to add zeros and multiply with a certain number, but what number is this? We know for certain that um, if there are three characters in the message, there should be six characters in the code, right? Because it's times two, ma. because like every character is mapped into two code character, two code, two character codes. Hence what you can do is, you find this number, and then you deduct it by the length of your current final string. So, len string, the length of the message times two deducted by the length of the final string. This part over here, you put it here in this particular part, and hence you have the final answer. It's more, comp it's less into it's not, it's less intuitive, but then you don't have to worry about whether your number is single digit or double digit. Dictionary is super long, I wasted time, but I think, right, if you did dictionary, right, I think you might actually save time rather than like thinking all the super weird logic thing. Okay. So see, if you can see, right, when you solve problems, if you solve problems, you try to come up with this first. And then you, from there, you start breaking your problems into parts. And then you try to figure out from then, there onwards. Will dictionary users be awarded full marks? Yes, if I recall correctly, it will be awarded full marks. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's... Okay, let's talk about part two. Part two is more tricky. Part two is trickier lah. Um, okay, part two right, I don't, uh, it doesn't matter lah. Part two, if you wanna do it iteratively or recursively, it doesn't matter. But then like, I think here is like, again, like the key is mapping, so like, uh, you want to do like one is uh, iterate, iterate through the code. But this one is be careful. You need to iterate it like in two characters at the same time. This one I'll let you figure it out. Second is map the code, convert the code to characters. Lastly, combine them. Now, number two is the hard part. Lah. Number two is the hard part. Basically, uh, number two, right? Um, if you use a dictionary, you'll be having a hard time, basically. Because then, like, it means that you need to, uh, yeah, if you use a dictionary, it's gonna be it, it, this. So, uh, yeah, let me just like. Okay, if you use, basically, since the mapping is custom, uh, mapping is custom, right? You need to somewhat like uh. Create you need to create your dictionary. You cannot ha uh, hand, how to say, you cannot handwritten it. You cannot hard code it. 
So um, maybe you can do like for like for character in alphabets. No, that's a bad example. I'll try. I'll start with the simplest answer first. I'll start with the simplest answer first. You have alphabets. A, B, C, until Z. All right. Basically, what you want to do is alphabets. You take the index, right? So, assuming here that you have converted your code to integer, which is simply int code, right? What you want to do is um, you put that answer here, so like code, but then there's the offset, right? So you can just simply like plus or minus the offset as necessary. Now, what happens if it goes beyond the boundaries, right? Say it goes beyond the boundaries. As you kind of need to like do a reset, so perhaps like you can do some simple logic like if it's like what you can do is uh, uh, offset percentile 26. As in this case, the number will never exceed 46. I forgot offset is minus or plus. I forgot. So this is the easy way. Another way of doing it is actually rearranging the alphabets. Because like, remember offset is meaning like the alphabets are shifted, right? So we have a code of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, D, E, and it got shifted to the, I don't know, left or right, I forgot, C, D, E, F, G. So instead, we can actually do that. So alphabets is A to Z, and then the new alphabets is alphabets from the offset point till the end, plus the alphabets until the offset point. So in this case, like we if we have like A, B, C, D, E, we'll cut at here and we'll shift it here, C, D, E, A, B. Okay, that's the second easy way. The third easy way is, to sh uh, no, I, I mean, that's, that's the only two that's easy. Lah. You kind of can use ORD as well. If you use dictionary, it means that you kind of need to manually generate your dictionary. So like you need to like know like for I in range 26, you kind of need to be able to figure out like uh, what is the character that should be inserted in the dictionary. Lah. And that one may be quite difficult. The, the reverse of ORD is actually CHR. So CHR, the insert the value of integer, it will give you the actual character. So it's kind of the reverse part. So in this case, perhaps you want to do like CHR I plus offset, maybe I forgot, plus the ORD of A. Because like A is like the baseline here. So those are several ways you decode a message when it's offset. The easiest way is actually using index. Uh. Okay, um, I think I'm just talking to a wall now. So, um, yeah, um, that's part two for you. Part two is actually pretty difficult. And I mean, like, if I were you, I think I'd skip that part two. <laughs> I would personally skip part two and just jump straight to part three. Because, yeah, um, I think, right, personally, I would think, like, if you guys actually did part three instead of part two, I think you guys can actually do better because like part three is actually more doable. Question two and question three is bomb because you guys were already shocked from question one. 
you guys already were like on, on a state of mental shock. Yeah lah, you guys panic. Think if you guys did question first, three first right, and just read it carefully and in a calm manner, I think you can do better. Yeah, I think the 400 limit was, I think it's, it was, uh, I don't know. The overall result so far, I can see it's quite mixed. I'd, I'd say the grade distribution is quite uh, uniform. It's not bell. It's not bell. It's quite uniform. That one, I'm not so sure. Okay, uh, do you have any questions regarding the, the Saturday's midterms? I'll be invigilating as well, so don't worry. Do, do you guys got any questions for midterms? Can help us during midterms? No, unfortunately I cannot. You can only help yourself. Sorry, man. Can I ask a question from midterms last year? Of course you can. Yeah, you can. Adrian, do you want to share screen? I'll start sharing. Yes, if you want to ask a question from past midterms, yes, you can. This is the purpose of the class. Yes. Uh, hi, yes. How do you do question uh, one? Huh? Oh, I hate question oh. one. I really hate it. Cause um, question one is more mathematical rather than like programming. So like you gotta like think. Um. Like, I mean, if you, you kind of understand, right, why it's Z minus 1. Because basically, like, you know, X, X, X modulo Y, right, you can actually, like, set this to any number. But then, like, I is constrained by this. Modulo Z will create, will make I to be in the range of from 0 to Z minus 1. No, it is quite, the, uh, the question is, what is the maximum possible value assigned to variable i? So in this case, it's quite mathematical, I'd say. Um, um, okay, um, Adrian, can you uh, erase my annotation on my screen? Uh, can you just erase the annotation? But yeah, basically that's the case lah. Like it's a bit tricky here. Uh, I, at first I also didn't get it. Like, but then yeah lah. Like basically x modulo y right. You can actually set this to any number you want. You can, in fact, like, uh, you can set it to any number you want lah. And then you just make sure that modulo z is uh basically the modulo z will just like reduce everything to like z minus one. It's a trick. It's quite. It's not a trick question, lah. But it it requires you to think mathematically. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> now, for none of the above are correct. I'm that one is. I'm not quite sure why. I I really. I forgot what was the explanation. I remember there was supposed to be an explanation, but I kind of forgot it. OK. 
okay, I'll just like stay here. If you guys got any question, if you guys don't have any questions, feel free to leave. Okay, I see people leaving already. Thank you. All right, have a nice day, guys. Can you explain why is it Z minus one again? Uh, basically, you uh, the earlier question right was to like maximize the value of i, but then like the maximum of value of i cannot exceed z minus one because like the modulo right modulo means like the remainder of a division. Hence, like if I divide something by the remainder of ten, confirm like you the remainder will be between zero and nine, regardless of what is the value before. Can you explain the lambda thing again, Lel? Especially the three lambda together. Okay. <laughs> the three lambdas together is it? The uh, yeah. Let me open it. Is it this one? HL, is it this one? Yeah, we go left to right. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, um, think here first, what we want to try to understand is how, how the part is structured. So we can see that this is a bracket. Okay. There's a bracket. This is a bracket here. This is another bracket and this is another bracket. This bracket is enclosed inside this bracket. So it's not really that we just want to like know like the outer casings on the first level brackets. Because that's the one that really separates things up. And then second, what we want to do is actually we want to like to make it easier, we want to like pull out some of the lambdas out, those that are clearly lambdas. We just, some that are lambdas that, you know, like the simple lambdas, we just want to pull them out to make our calculations easier. So in this case, I want to pull this out as like theta. I want to replace this as theta. Lambda z equals to z. I want to pull this out as gamma. Gamma lambda y, y. So in this case, I have lambda x, x x gamma and then I have theta and then I have one. Now we have a very sim more simplified statement. Let's try, try to do it. So now uh, we'll look at this part over the left. Um, the thing is like this one is already pretty simple. We cannot do much about it. So then like we can now take in the next input which is this one. This is a lambda that takes a function that takes an input. So let, let's bring the input in. So it becomes theta gamma. So it means like we have a function theta that takes in the value gamma. And now this right, we can kind of like execute this. We can see that theta is a function that takes in gamma z and returns z. So in this case, uh, lambda theta, lambda gamma is gamma. And this one is simplified as gamma. Okay, gamma is already at this very simplified state. So now we take the next input, which is one, gamma one. Now gamma one is indeed a function that takes in one input, right? In this case, if I have a lambda one, it will give me one, as the output is one. Is it clear? Like the, how to say, um, both the variables of the z going to the x, is it? With the variable z here, is it? You mean this? So the theta going to the x colon x. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
because remember this is a function right this is a function like i think if you want to make it clearer like maybe i can represent this like as another function <laughs> like maybe this is like uh, i don't know omega which is omega is like a gamma is the lambda x x gamma like this so like basically this one is re represented as an omega theta then like basically the theta is you run the function law yeah correct it's just inserted here okay i see that the lambda in this z a for the lambda z colon z is actually a variable yeah yeah these are variables actually like these all right this is a variable, this is a variable, this is a variable, this is a variable, z is a variable, z is a variable, gamma is a variable, theta is a variable, x is a variable. These are all variables. What I mean is like, it's something like the f1 dash 1 something, 1 comma 1 something like that is it for the lambda z. So in this case, it's lambda z and 1 if we put in a normal function way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. Thank you. No worries. Okay, any other questions? Hello? Yes, hello. Uh, uh, share my screen. Sure. All right, okay. Let, let uh, me should, all right, let me stop. I was looking at this. Um so did this Quite long ago, but uh, I now do one. They just come take my way into the answer. <laughs> so I never do anything else. So, um, for this question, right, I, I have my my initial way of thinking was I sub six inside, I get seven, and then seven will return to the lambda, so this one will collapse into seven. And then try seven means sub seven into f, and then means all the f have seven. And then for compose seven seven is like here, and then you give this, but then I'm lost. Yeah, because like yeah, I mean like I'm also lost hearing your explanation. Sorry, <laughs> but basically we don't want to jump the gun here. We just wanna. Take it slow. In this case, um, we have tri um, tries. All right. Let me represent that with something else. So like that. Uh. So I have tries that uh, six. And then we know that thrice is a lambda. Um, sorry, I'm writing lambda. something because you cannot see. Is it? Oh, weird. Okay, okay. Uh, let me just uh do a hard reset first. Give, give me a moment. Okay. So, oh. Price lambda x x plus one six that's okay so I'll replace this as tries theta six which is easier price is a lambda that takes in one parameter and then basically inserts a compose compose thing so um this is as this is this the theta serves as an f. So this will be compose compose theta 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 six. Okay. The six just trails. And now we start with the smallest part inside. Compose FG means it returns a lambda of lambda X FG. So like in this case, um, lambda X, uh, in this case, theta, theta, so like theta, 
data x right so in this case maybe i wanna represent this as something else first maybe gamma which is lambda x data data x x so this is a uh, gamma data compose right six compose it returns lambda x that returns gamma and then theta of x i think this is good enough already so we have this function over here on the left i think that's all that we can do it's already in the simplest lambda form we can insert six into here and then here it means that we have a gamma theta six we evaluate theta theta takes in six and plus one so it will give us seven if you're following me now we have a gamma seven so gamma seven right what happens is that gamma seven will give us theta theta seven now we evaluate theta seven eight and then theta eight nine uh oh Okay, wait, take wait, it slow, take it slow, take it slow. Let me take a look. Uh, um, so what you will recommend for lambda is we just simplify until we can no longer simplify. I mean, isn't doesn't that make us life easier? Mm, it's more of, I don't know how to simplify. <laughs> <laughs> same, same. Hold on, wait. <laughs> Um, it's not easy la. It's it, it is a bit tricky. Um, like you need practice la. Definitely, you just need to. I think you need to practice a lot. Um, I also cannot say la, how to do it. Mm. We are having trouble uh understanding that from the second line to third line, the compose, compose, key data, and like how how do you get this? Hmm? It's it's in the function like compose is defined by compose fg right returns lambda x fgx. Oh sorry sorry so wrong wrong. Choice 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 is a lambda f compose compose f f f. Mm -hmm. Here here um. Choice is lambda f compose compose. Mm. I'm just copying over. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Donna. Yeah. How so thinking? Shit. Lambda X. We complete the okay. Actually, I don't get how the... Oh, wait. Also, whenever... Okay, so in this case, right, the F can actually just represent the lambda itself without the lambda word. Pardon? So, like, because the, the lambda F and the compose, mm. so the lambda... So the f is actually a function itself that is a, it's already a lambda function itself. I mean, in this case, the input is theta, right? The input is theta. So we just input theta and replacing f law. We don't really need to care what f exactly is. I mean, like, it would be nice to have a good understanding of what f is, but then you don't really need to care because in this case we know like try uh we wanna ex we wanna see what's the output of tries theta oh, tries so, bracket oh, theta so for this one the lambda the lambda x plus one is actually an input mm -hmm. oh okay okay that's why that's why it's easier to think if it's you know you just put it theta rather than like lambda x because then for theta right then you don't need to care what the hell is theta you just need to insert theta in 
only when you need to uh, break it open, then you open it. Oh, so the six be oh, oh sorry. Uh, so the six belong to the lambda x, and then the the lambda x we change to the theta, and the theta belongs to the f. Wait, 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 wait. Six. Okay, okay. Six doesn't belong anywhere. Okay, for this case, right? In this case, right? We just ignore six. That's why why I always like you know um, that is why why I always like um, do boxes like this. Because this is just the part that we want to focus. Whatever is outside the box, right? We just ignore for now. Oh, we do okay. it from left to right. We'll try to um, simplify the left part first, process the left part, and then start taking values from the right. So in this case, right, we don't even need to care like where the six belongs. Because like to say that six belongs to the lambda, six belongs to the theta, it's it's just, it's not right, lah. Okay, so am I right to say like the the lambda x colon x plus one is the main focus in a way. Um, I would not recommend that. I would, I would just say like, don't, don't. Okay, uh, just care about the first left variable. Yeah, just focus from left to right. Don't, don't care. Cause okay. like, yeah. So in this case, we have tries. Then you know, like tries break it into the the output, which is compose, 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 theta, 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 and then from compose, compose, theta, 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 you wanna like. Uh, solve the inner part first, compose theta theta, which gives us another lambda. And you know, lambdas always confuse us, right? So we want to represent lambda as another as a variable. So I store it as a variable gamma. So now we have compose gamma theta. Then now we get the return value for compose gamma theta, which is another lambda. And now from that point, it's actually simpler. And then we take now. Once that the left part, the trice part is actually simpler, now we take the value 6 in. Insert it inside the lambda. And um, yeah, start calculating from the, there onwards. Hmm. So after we simplify everything, we do from right to left. You don't do right from to left. You never do from right to left. So like suddenly, like if suddenly for any reason somehow got like six six like this, right? You don't do right to left. You still do left to right. You think no, I mean, no, no, no. I mean like from your last line, you are doing the theta first. Mm -hmm. So you are doing from right to left in a way, right? no man. Oh, okay. The exact term is inside out. Oh, okay, okay. You do it inside out. That's more proper. So like. You do something that's inside the brackets first. Then after that, the thing that is inside the brackets is sim is done or simple. Then you do the outer bracket. If everyone is in the same level, you do from left to right. Okay, understood. Right. Thank you. Okay, Samuel, you got a question. Then if it's something okay. like. Uh, Lambda x, x plus a, 1, 3, then the x is 1, the a is... Hmm. Okay, um, so for your question, right, lambda x, um, uh, it, it depends. Because, um, because, right, say, uh, yeah. let me process this. So, this one we do from the left side first, right? Lambda x, x plus a, right? It will return, it will give us, oh, wait. Uh, this one, right, will actually give us um, uh, 1 plus a. So it does not give us a lambda. It just gives us a uh, one plus a. So if the variable a is not defined before, uh, kind of fucked up. It, it cannot work. Uh, and another alternative would be I think this is what you meant lah. 
lambda a lambda x x plus a then that would work because then you will insert value of one inside lambda, the first lambda so like later the output will be lambda x equals to x plus one and then it takes in the value of three so it becomes three plus one into four Uh, yeah, like if you, uh, I mean, in this case, it is the same, like if that's a purpose, like it's the same, like. but then like there's some, there's a reason why some people want to separate it into two separate lambdas to be like, you know, some somewhat like, you know, having a child lambda, there are several practical purposes for that. Yeah, indeed, indeed, the red is actually the input, correct. Oh, okay, any other questions? No, if no, 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 we don't do lambda x first, we do from left to right. So, in this case, if we do it this way, right, if we do it this way, uh, the next thing is, uh, yeah, that's the process. Lah. Okay. Try to understand the notation. Uh, I think if you cannot figure out the notation, then you might have a hard time trying to solve the higher order function. Because like notation can be confusing first time using it. Like, it can be quite confusing. Uh, so I, like try to familiarize yourself with it. Thanks, boss. I'm sorry, so you run lambda a twice in this case? Uh, it's, what do you mean by twice? Uh? So like the value of one going into a and then the x plus one and then after that three going to a no, and no. then... No, the, the, the return value of lambda a is not x plus one but the return value of lambda a is lambda x, x plus a. All right, thanks, Fang Kiang. So, the lambda a will return lambda x, x plus a. It's like a package. Thing to make it clearer, it's like this. Uh. But then, like, the brackets are not really necessary. Andy and Samuel, do you have other like questions that you guys want to discuss, like from your past PEs or anything?
I think there's one now. Uh, yeah. Sure, sure. Like, you see this one, right? I mean, there's 50 arguments, right? So it's like, is there a way to do it instead? Because when I do this question, I, all I can think of is that I do like from zero to 50. Uh. Oh, okay, so like this kind of question means like the prof wants you like to find a pattern. Right? It means like you, get, you need to like understand the if else statements. Right, so I think this one like, you, this, this one you need to analyze the code. So like you have 50, right? And then it go, it's, it checks from zero to 50. And then there are four counts, meaning that there are four boxes, right? And then you can see, I think from a glance that, oh, there's plus one. So like they're actually counting something. So each of these boxes are actually counting something. So in this case, in count zero, right, it it is it asks like if it's if it's divisible by two and divisible by six means like in the first part it asks like if it's divisible by six. Second is divisible by two. Then the two one is like divisible by three. And then the last is like whatever is left. So like in this part, right? I think like yeah, you are you are right in pointing out that oh you cannot count fifty. You cannot count until six fifty because it will waste time. But then you need to analyze your code. So in this case, here's your code analysis lah. So you what you wanna do is you count how many is divisible by six, which uh, assuming from the answer is correct, it's it means that. It is nine. Then like next is 70, uh, divisible by two, but not divisible by 16. Divisible by two should be around, it should be 50. It should be 26. Which, I mean, everything is 17, lah, like seriously. And then divisible by three is, I assume eight and then 17. Lah. So basically it's a code analysis in this case. That's why like it's like arithmetic. So it's like uh I just take note of all those values that can be divisible by six. Then after that the two, three. Mm. Basically you need to figure out what does the if else statement does. Actually, right, this same concept, right, is can is quite applicable to the PE part three where you have the many boxes. Like if you actually try to analyze what does your for loop do, like it actually repeats the same thing over and over again, over the same patterns, then you can actually like merge some of the patterns together. And instead of using a for loop, maybe using a more instantaneous mathematic formula for it. But isn't this very time consuming for this question? That's why you need to be smart about it. Uh, the, and yeah, this is the reason why like last year, I think the highest was 21. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I heard a lot of people didn't finish. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, is it the end of today? Yeah, thanks. Okay, I mean, I, I wish I wish you guys the very best of luck, really. Um, if you guys got any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, help as much as I can. Okay, bye. 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 Bye-bye.